next we will uh, i will uh, explain about capabilities of dbms okay uh, the first one okay uh, data definition okay it will it can specify the structure of database content used to create tables and define characteristics of field second data dictionary Okay, automated or manual file storing definitions of data elements and their characteristics. So it will uh, uh, will save the size, the format, and other characteristics. Okay. Okay, and the third one okay, is data manipulation language. This is for querying and reporting. Okay, so you can use to add, change, delete, retrieve data from database. So uh, example here. So this is in, in this SQL. Okay, so kalau you nampak kat sini, so ya yeah, ini select, select from where is the instruction. Okay, so this one is the table, uh, the entity dot attribute. Okay, so select part dot part number, entity dot attribute, entity dot attribute, okay, entity dot attribute. Alright, so ya yeah, ini yang urut besar ni semua kita panggil sebagai kita punya entity. Okay, so ini lebih serius lah sebab nak paparkan part number yang 137 ataupun 150. So, database approach to data management. First, kita nak tengok design database. So, we want to look about the conceptual and physical. So, the conceptual will be the abstract model from business perspective in physically. So, how the database will arrange on direct access storage uh, devices. Okay, and then from the conceptual and physical it will identify the relationships among data elements and redundant database element okay next we have normalization so in a normalization it is the process of creating small stable flexible and adaptive data structure from complex group of data so this is before normalization everything you put in one place okay everything okay uh, so then we uh, we move into the normalization we try to uh, we try to uh, del uh, delegate okay so the order in an order entity part is under part entity supply is under supply entity so we use the referential integrity so referential integrity is a rules okay we use by relational database management system to ensure the relationships between tables remain consistent Okay, so we have the part, we have the supplier, we have the order, and then uh, this one is your bridge entity. Bridge entity ni maksud dia, dia menghubungkan antara uh, part dengan supplier, part dengan order, contohnya lah. Okay, so this is what we call as the bridge. Okay, yang lain tu kita tahu, ini pasal part, tapi dia ada foreign key. Ini pasal supplier, no foreign key. Order, no foreign key. Tapi dia semua ada primary key. So, in ERD, so you tengok tadi kan, kita dah ada part. So, dia ada supplier, this one, part, this one, order, this one, this one is called line item. Lepas tu, you nampak benda-benda ni. So, yang ini maksudnya uh, option, uh, sorry, uh, mandatory one. This is mandatory many. Okay, belakang ni adalah mu, mu, yang yang depan ni. Okay, yang depan ni, garisan depan ni, garisan depan ni, ini mengadakan mandatory. Kalau optional, dia mesti bulat. Okay, yang belakang ni, ini adalah many. Ya, kalau dia bertegak, itu adalah one. Okay, so one supplier provides many part. One part is ordered by many line item. Many line item is belongs to one order. Okay, so ERT is used by database designers to document the data model illustrates relationship between entities okay so if you can see here if a business doesn't get data model right system won't be able to serve the business well okay next we move into big data what are the challenge of big data we know one nowadays uh, we are talking about big data everything every day is about big data the big data there big data here okay so what is big data okay so because this is what ever happened okay in the next uh 10 years in the next 20 years okay maybe um when you become the parents so this is what happened to your kids okay so dia akan bila you cerita macam kids okay dulu 
uh, ayah cuma pakai a uh, gigabyte je. Ha gigabyte tu apa? So tak tahu. Okey so sebab dia lain lahir dia menjadi semakin laju. Like my kid baru 3 tahun laju, sangat laju. Uh, you tak perlu ajar. Dia tahu how to explore anything. Saya tak pernah tunjuk dekat dia macam mana untuk shut down my my laptop tapi he, he knows where to uh, to click the button. Ada satu hari tu dia tak I tak tahu dia klik apa. Dan until now I tak tahu apa benda yang dia klik tapi benda tu jadi. Ha so mereka cepat. Okey memang dia lah, itulah beza because of the generation. This is what happen. Okey when you when you uh, when you apply the big data in your in your daily life later. Alright. So we have sampai sini you know pakai kita ada yota byte kira lah berapa banyak kosong byte kat sini. Okay, how big are they? Too big. Okay, too big. This is the comparative. Okay, so this is basic unit of measurement. One piece of text, a piece of music. Ini kita pakai megabyte. Dia pun dah cukup besar. Lepas tu bila tengok uh, filem, lepas tu kita pakai pula Blu-ray. Wah, Blu-ray. Okay, dah jadi gigabyte. And then six million books eh. Dah jadi one terabyte. A stack of DVD as 55 story building. Dah jadi one petabyte. Okay, the, all the information generated up to 2003. Daripada dulu, habis sekarang dah jadi exabyte. All the data recorded in 2011 is uh, dah jadi zettabyte. And the storage capacity of the NSA data center will be the yottabyte. Okay, what is big data? Okay, big data is a massive set of unstructured or semi-structured data from web traffic, social media, sensors and so on. It is the volumes to grid for the to grid okay for typical DBMS and the business interested in big data. Why? It will reveals more patterns and interesting anomaly. Okay, so dekat sini kita akan belajar kita punya pattern. Okay, um, kenapa macam orang suka tengok YouTube? Apa yang disuka tengok dekat YouTube? Apa yang bestnya dekat YouTube? Video apa yang best? So, benda macam ni. So, dia akan belajar pattern dekat situ and provide new insight to customer behavior where the pattern and financial market activities. So, kalau dekat sini, you tengok, this are the 10 tools, 10 areas. Okay, these are the tools. These are the area yang dia boleh pakai for the big data. Okay, so need new technology and tools capabilities of managing and analyzing non-traditional and traditional data. So, these are the infrastructure, okay, for business intelligence. The first one, we have data warehouse. It will store the current and historical data. Semua yang dekat akib, semua dia ada. Okay, consolidates and standardize the information for use across enterprise. But data cannot be altered because we already put, okay, in the warehouse and provide analysis and reporting tools. Okay, tu data warehouse ni besar. So, yang kecil dia, kita panggil sebagai data mat. So, data mat, uh, kita kenali sebagai a subset. Okay, so this is the summarize. Or we just fo focus on a portion of data. And we focus on single subject or line of business. Saja. So, kita kecilkan dia. The third one is Hadoop. Okay, it will enable the distributed parallel processing of big data across inexpensive computer. Okay, so number four is uh, in memory computing. Ini lebih kepada main memory. Okay, we use RAM. And require optimized hardware. And number five is analytic platform. It is a high speed platform using both relational and non-relational tools optimized for large data set. So in an analytical platform, kita boleh guna yang ini. This are, kita belajar dia punya relationship, patterns and trends. So the first one, we use OLAP, online analytical processing. It will support multidimensional. Multidimensional maknanya you kena tengok di setiap segi. Kena tengok atas, bawah, kiri, kanan, serta sudut. Okay. Untuk dapatkan dia penjawapan. And then we have data mining. Okay. Data mining ni kita akan find the hidden pattern, relationship in data set. Uh, kita menggunakan classification, association, prediction, clustering, sequential patterns and decision tree. So kita predict or we just, kita akan classifikan. Okay. Yang ini data macam ni. Ini data macam ni. Okay. And then kita clusterkan dia. Okay, yang macam ni kita klasterkan sebagai apa. Itu yang kemuncuran kesihatan buat lah. Dia buat clustering dekat situ. Kita kena sebut satu-satu. So, kita sebut dia kluster apa. Ah, senang. So, we know the kluster apa tu dia akan melibatkan. Masa COVID ni kan, dia akan melibatkan satu kawasan. Okay. The third one is text mining. 
Okay, text mining will extract key element from large unstructured data set. So, dia berdasarkan text. Okay, uh, you tengoklah kalau macam in organization, they have, they have too many text. So, they will do the mining. And number four is web mining. Okay, discovery and analysis of useful pattern and information from web. So, dia akan tengok dari segi web content, web structure and web usage. Databases and the web. Okay, so this is database and the web. So, kalau you tengok kat sini, kita ada, of course, they have the database. Kalau tidak, takkan dia akan dapat benda yang sama. So, what are the advantages? So, first, is of use of browser software. Second, web interface require few or no changes to database. And lastly, expensive to add web interface to system. So, how you want to manage? Okay, your data resources. Okay, satu, kita establish an information policy. Kita ada rules, procedures, rules for sharing, managing and standardizing the data. So, we have the data admin. So, dia akan melibatkan policy, data governance. Dia melibatkan policy and process especially regarding of the government regulations and database admin. Create and maintain the database. Second, we have to ensure the data quality. Kita ada data quality audit. So, we have to structure all the survey of the accuracy, the level of completeness of the data in information system. Uh, uh, sama ada tepat atau tidak satu-satu data tu untuk menghasilkan satu-satu report. Dan, we have data cleansing. Okay, we use the software to detect and correct data that are incorrect, incomplete, improperly formatted or redundant. Kita tak nak benda ni berlaku. Mm. All right, so I think um, I want to stop here, okay, about the rules of knowledge management system. Okay, nanti I sambung untuk next video.